Greetings and salutations. This is Akirishin. It's not breakfast time, but we're going to be having some pancakes. We are looking at the XF5U pancake heavy fighter. Chance Vault American Plane. This heavy fighter features four 20 millimeter cannons which do 170 damage per second have a rate of fire of 700 rounds per minute and an effective firing range of 800 meters you can also equip this aircraft with either two thousand pound uh, bombs which do 6,000 damage each within a 90 meter radius or you can equip it with two tiny Tim rockets which do 4,500 damage each in a 70 meter radius. Personally I prefer the tiny Tim rockets because you don't have to stay on the target for so long you can you know fire them and then move on uh, but the bombs are more effective so in this particular video I have equipped the bombs um, but the, you know the tiny Tim rockets are also effective as well in terms of uh, upgrades I have equipped improved flaps 3 which increases uh, efficiency of airspeed reduction with idle by 20% um, but the main reason I equip it is that it also increases maneuverability and turns by 3% I've also equipped engine tuning 3 which increases engine power by 5% as well as improved aircraft polish 3 which increases maximum airspeed by 5% and acceleration in a dive by 25% uh, those two particular upgrades are intended to accentuate one of this aircraft's main strengths which is its high speed and long lasting boost the American heavy fighters have a 30 second uh, engine boost which is pretty fantastic and of course there's a consumable that helps us extend that to almost 60 seconds in terms of ammunition I have equipped universal which has equal chance fire and equal chance critical damage this aircraft's engine is said to be vulnerable so I have equipped automatic engine restarter uh, to deal with that situation uh, the aircraft also has large dimensions meaning it's a bigger target as a result I have equipped control surface auto trim which automatically restores controllability of wings and tail uh, these two uh, gold consumables have 60 second cooldowns and are activated automatically you don't have to think about it uh, the non gold version of those two consumables have 90 second cooldowns and must be activated manually an absolute must on this aircraft is the consumable engine cooling which reduces engine overheating by 70 percent so that takes your 30 second engine boost once it has been exhausted and you can revive it almost up to uh, what it was so you can have almost a 60 second engine boost which is just fantastic I have structured my pilot skills to accentuate the aircraft's high speed. 
by selecting Engine Guru 1 and Engine Guru 2, which collectively increase engine thrust and top speed by 5%. For purposes of this video, I have also selected Firefighter, which extinguishes fire by active maneuvering. Essentially, you must maintain a high angular velocity in any axes, and that extinguishes the fire. Now, I am just about to get another skill point, and when I do, I will drop the Firefighter skill and instead pick up Demolition Expert, which will increase damage caused by bombs and rockets and their blast radius by 15%. Looking at this aircraft's stats, oops. you see uh, optimum altitude is 2,000 meters. So it is a medium altitude performer. Optimum airspeed is 539 kilometers per hour. It takes 13 seconds for this aircraft uh, on average to turn 360 degrees. Its top speed at best altitude is 810 kilometers per hour. Then you see here uh, effective in mid-altitude combat. Um, so that's, you know, your higher altitude aircraft are more in the 2200 to 2800 meter range. In terms of paint schemes, you are currently looking at summer. Hard to see in this lighting. Winter. This would be mistaken for your average UFO, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Marine. And my personal favorite, desert. It's pretty unusual to see the American aircraft with uh, such, um, with an awesome paint scheme uh, such as this desert. I mean, compare that um, Compare that to the F7F's uh, desert color, which is this. <laughs> I mean, that's what you get with a lot of the American aircraft. So to, to have this uh, really nice paint scheme is, is awesome. All right, so at this point, we're going to head over to World of Warplanes website and use their aircraft compare tool and compare this aircraft to other tier eight heavy fighters so that uh, we can put it in context and to help you decide, is this an aircraft you want to grind for as compared to other options? So here we are on World of Warplanes website. And I have lined up the tier eight heavy fighters that are in the game to compare against the XF5U. And first up, we have the Westland P1056. And the Lockheed XP58 Chain Lightning. Looking at gun armaments, uh, the P-1056 and the XP-8 are said to be significantly superior to the XF-5U. So let's take a look and see why that is. 
So the P1056 has two sets of cannons. It has four 20 millimeter Hispano cannons, which do 130 damage per second. Now the XF5U has four 20 millimeter cannons and they do 170 damage. Uh, and so they, the 20 millimeters on the pancake do more damage per second than those on the P1056. In addition, their rate of fire is much higher and their effective firing range is much, is higher than those on the P1056. However, the Pancake has no further gun armaments, whereas the P1056 also has two 40 millimeter Rolls-Royce uh, cannons, and they do 240 damage per second. Now, they have a, a very low rate of fire and do not have as long and effective firing range as the pancake does, but still essentially you have six cannons on the, the P1056 versus the four on the pancake. So that is why the P1056 is said to be superior in the gun armaments category. Uh, the XP-58 Lightning has four 37 millimeter cannons and they do 200 damage per second. So that is 30 damage per second higher than the cannons on the pancake. However, they do have a very low rate of fire and do not have as long an effective firing range. Now, personally, I would rather have the slightly lower damage per second that is on the pancake with the high rate of fire versus the higher damage per second, but a significantly lower rate of fire that, that is on the chain lightning. I mean, it's a big difference on the pancakes. On the pancake, it is 700 rounds per minute versus just 120 rounds per minute for the chain lightning. And it, you know, in this uh, current gameplay where we have very fast aircraft, um, having a higher rate of fire, I think, is maybe more important. Of course, this aircraft also has a rear gun uh, for 12.7 millimeter machine guns turret. So that's that's huge to have that capability. Um, Pancake, of course, does not have that defensive capability. All right. So moving on to bombs and rockets, uh, the P-1056 is indicated as being superior whereas the lightning is indicated to be inferior to the pancake. Looking into that more specifically, we see that the P-1056 has two 1,000 pound bombs, which essentially are the exact same bombs that are on the pancake. It also has rockets that do 1500 damage a piece in a 35 meter radius and it has eight of those. In comparison, the uh, pancake does not have any additional uh, bombs or rockets.
So, I mean, you can use the Tiny Tim rockets, but those just replace the uh, two bombs that the Pancake has, uh, and they do less damage. There, are, there is no additional set of rockets, so that is why the um, P-1056 is indicated as being superior in the bombs and rockets category. In terms of the lightning, it does not have bombs or rockets, so clearly it is inferior in that category. Hit points. Uh, the pancake has more hit points than the P-1056, but less than the chain lightning. In terms of airspeed, uh, at uh, best altitude, the pancake outperforms both the P-1056 and the chain lightning. Time it takes on average to turn 360 degrees, both the P-1056 and the chain lightning are inferior um, to the pancake. Uh, as heavy fighters go, the pancake is fairly maneuverable. I can tell you that I have fought pancakes uh, in the P-1056 and they have been able to outmaneuver me uh, in, in the pancake. Uh, stall speed, the P-1056 and the chain lightning will stall sooner than the pancake. Uh, while the pancake may outperform those other two aircraft in terms of top speed at best altitude, the optimum airspeed for the P-1056 and the chain lightning is higher than that of the pancake. Optimum altitude, uh, the P-1056 is also a uh, medium altitude performer whereas the chain lightning is a high altitude performer by 500 meters. The pancake outclimbs in terms of rate of climb both the P-1056 and the chain lightning. All right, so we'll take those two aircraft off our list here and we are left with the one of my favorites, the Messerschmitt ME-262. And in terms of armaments, the ME-262 is indicated as being uh, superior. And just looking at that, let's see here. The ME-262 has four thirty millimeter cannons which do 200 damage per second which is higher of course than the 170 damage per second done by the 20 millimeter cannons on the pancake uh, but again you have the issue of rate of fire uh, the rate of fire on the pancake is 700 rounds per minute versus just 240 on the ME-262. Also, the uh, pancake would be able to engage an ME-262 200, um, almost 200 meters sooner than the ME-262 could engage the pancake because the effective firing range for the pancake is 800 meters versus just 616 for the ME-262. So while the ME-262 is indicated as being uh, having more powerful gun armaments, I would have to disagree uh, because I think it's more useful uh, to, to lose just the 30 uh, damage per second uh, in the pancake in favor of having a much, much higher uh, rounds per minute. 
in terms of uh, bombs and rockets, uh, the ME-262 is indicated as being inferior. And just looking at that more specifically now, in this particular uh, comparison, I have equipped the uh, bombs for the ME-262. They do 5,000 in damage in a 75 meter uh, damage radius versus the pancakes bombs do 6,000 damage in a 90 meter radius. Now, of course, the ME-262 has can equip rockets but those are salvo fired rockets. So they are better for attacking enemy aircraft than they are ground targets. In terms of hit points, the uh, pancake has 150 higher hit, hit points than does the ME-262. So pretty significant difference there in terms of survivability. Um, top speed at best altitude, however, the ME-262 outperforms the Pancake by 80 kilometers per hour. Now that does go to survivability. You know, the uh, faster pace of the ME-262 does increase its survivability as compared to the Pancake. So you have to take that into consideration. Uh, Average time to turn 360 degrees, the ME-262 is 1.8 seconds inferior to the pancake in that regard. Optimum airspeed, uh, again, the ME-262 is better in that uh, particular category. However, in terms of st stall speed, the ME-262 will stall much sooner than the pancake will. So, you know, if it's an issue of going straight up, uh, the pancake may be more likely to, to win that. Optimum altitude, uh, the ME-262 is a high climber, high altitude aircraft, so um, whereas the uh, Pancake is a medium altitude heavy fighter. Uh, also, uh, again, when we're talking about if you were to try to escape an ME-262 and a Pancake, you might want to consider going straight up because the Pancake, number one, will stall later than the ME-262. 262 as we just discussed, but also it will out climb in terms of pace the ME-262. All right, so I hope that helps put these aircraft in context with one another and will help you decide what line you might want to grind for. I have to say that based on that comparison, um, the, the pancake is, is pretty competitive. So having reviewed my build for this aircraft and its specifications, as well as compared it to other tier eight heavy fighters, let's head into a battle now and see how it performs. Okay, so we have drawn the Road to Rome Ascension map. Looks like we have one other human player on our team. And the enemy team has two human players as well. We'll head over here to the garrison. Drop our ordnance.
going to flip vertically, which is the best way to flip these larger aircraft. So what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of start heading towards the airfield, but we're going to hug these mountains because many times ground enemy ground attack aircrafts will make the trek here headed over to the plant thinking they're not going to be challenged. So we'll just uh, kind of watch that situation, see if they head over there, and if they do, we'll try to thwart their efforts to uh, attack. Nothing yet. Up here and deal with this heavy fighter. After we uh, get this aircraft, we'll take a look at the plant, see what's going on there. Okay, and yes, we do have uh, enemy aircraft over there fighting for the plant, so and we have our own as well, so let's head over there and give them a hand. Looks like we have two ground attack aircraft. So we'll zoom in here. We're going to try to hold back as far as we can. We've taken over the plant. This can bring us victory. Don't want to have them drop a bomb on us. Okay, so that takes care of that. Let's head on to their garrison. We're just about to get our bombs back, and we have some of our ground attack aircraft headed over there. So we're going to give them a hand. Go in ahead of them. Take out this um, one air defense aircraft, and then, having done that, we'll drop our ordnance if we're still alive, that is. There we go. Oh. The target of opportunity here. So, this is a zoom and boom aircraft, but we're not. Because of the circumstances, we're not really doing much zooming and booming. And looks like we have a human ground attack aircraft. And it is actually a multi-role, I should say. Did we get it? I think we're going to get the better of them. Very good. And while we were doing that, uh, looks like we got there. Got the garrison. Let's head over here. Take on this other heavy fighter. Flying a F7F. It's a very nice aircraft. I was hoping to drop and kill him with a bomb, but I wasn't able to get it off quickly enough. We've got to be careful he doesn't do the same to us. Over here, 
take out this ground attack aircraft before it swings around. There we go. And while this multi-roll is busy with our comrade there, we will take it out. Keep it up. Victory is almost All right. And we've got our receiving reports about rapidly deteriorating weather conditions. Support will be unable to heavy fighter coming in again. We are more maneuverable than this F seven F. Okay, so that was a good result there. Uh, over 12,000 in combat points, number one on the team. Subjugator, effective fire. 10 aerial targets destroyed. So I think that really showed this, this aircraft's strengths. Okay, so we weren't destroyed even a single time on that. We did over 6,000 in damage to aerial targets. Um, looks like we destroyed one ground target uh, and did 5,500 5, in damage to ground targets. Um, not a lot in that category, but uh, honestly, we spent most of our time uh, fending off uh, enemy aircraft trying to take the plant and then the garrison. Let's see if we had anything else show up here. Flying start looks like. Okay. So, looks like our counterpart was an XP 58 that did uh, five aerial targets, no damage to ground targets there. Well, let's uh, head into another one. Okay, so we have drawn the Road to Rome Call of Duty map, and we are headed over here to the garrison. We're going to drop our ordnance first. quick <laughs> all right so we'll gain some altitude here and head to the airfield Alright, so things are going pretty well here. And we've got some high altitude. Got a Spitfire here. Now the thing about the Spitfire is we have to take it out. I think the Spitfire is a little bit out of its element up here. So that gives us a slight advantage. He got a little too high there. Come over here and help our team at the garrison.
it looks like we have a uh, multi roll over here. Human player. Let's see if we can't deal with him. There we go. That's our Spitfire there, so. We are now in his element. Another human player here. aircraft coming in. This plane is ideally suited for taking on high survival aircraft like these ground attack aircraft. Well they really want this garrison. XF5U. These cannons do overheat. So we've just got to go with short bursts. And let's see. Deal with this ground attack aircraft here. attack aircraft. These have vicious, vicious rear guns. <laughs> Man, they are not giving up on this garrison. Five U players back. All right, come in here to the airfield. be able to take this back from them. That would, I'm pretty sure, irritate them greatly. Flip over vertically here. And I think that's what gave us the advantage there over the other, is that we flipped vertically, whereas he tried to flip horizontally. It definitely does make a difference. I'm proud of you, pilot. Head back home. 
Okay, so, um, Guardian for over 250 capture points, uh, Subjugator, of course, uh, Hunt for Stormbird, uh, which we took down four t attack aircraft in number one spot on the team, and our uh, grade three Chevron. Okay, so 10 aerial targets destroyed, uh, over 6,000 in damaged aerial targets. We were destroyed only once. We did 16,000 plus damage to ground targets and destroyed three ground targets. Captured three sectors. Over 13,000 in combat points. So that was a perfect uh, match to show this aircraft's uh, strengths. Uh, we also got flying uh, start, effective fire. So that, folks, is the XF5U Pancake, a uh, very aptly named. <laughs> I really like these propellers, like the colors on the propellers uh, and how large they are. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I'm confident that if you get an opportunity to fly the XF5U, you will have great success.